In today's video, we are going to discuss causes, diagnostic tests, and pharmacological treatment of right-sided congestive heart failure in dogs. The information presented here is based on the work of Dr. Rebecca E. Gumpf, a veterinary cardiologist. This video is a collaboration between Golden Isles Animal Hospital and Veterinary Channel. Right heart failure occurs when the right side of the heart is no longer working properly and cannot pump blood effectively to the lungs and left heart. As a result of this condition, fluid accumulates in the thoracic cavity and abdomen. Eventually, if the right heart failure is not treated, breathing is affected and death may occur. The most common cause of the development of right-sided congestive heart failure are atrioventricular valve degeneration of the right tricuspid valve, dilated cardiomyopathy, a condition that mainly affects large and giant breeds of dogs, congenital defects such as tricuspid dysplasia, ventricular septal defect, and atrial septal defect, chronic heartworm disease. Before we continue discussing right-sided congestive heart failure, it is important to mention another heart condition that can make the diagnosis of right heart failure a little challenging. Pericardial effusion is a condition that can mimic the right heart failure in dogs. With this condition, a large amount of fluid accumulates in the pericardial sac around the heart. Due to the excessive amount of fluid in the sac, the right side of the heart does not fill properly and the patient begins to accumulate fluids in the abdomen. An echocardiogram, heart ultrasound, is the preferable method to diagnose this condition. Sometimes an electrocardiogram can give us patterns that suggest the presence of this condition in dogs. Dogs with right-sided congestive heart failure cannot exercise. They develop abdominal distension and loss of muscle mass, which can be so severe that the backbones and ribs become prominent. When the abdomen is full of fluid, the dog may not be comfortable lying down and may breathe faster with increased effort. Dogs in severe distress often require stabilization before any tests can be performed to evaluate the heart and other organs that depend on normal heart function. The diagnostic protocol may include the following. Heartworm test, thoracic and abdominal radiographs, heart ultrasound, which is also known as an echocardiogram. This is a very useful test to evaluate the internal anatomy of the heart and to differentiate between congestive heart failure and pericardial effusion. An echocardiogram is recommended if an irregular heart rhythm is detected. A complete blood count, biochemical profile, and urinalysis are recommended to assess the status of the internal organs. If there is a significant amount of fluid in the thoracic cavity, it is usually removed so the dog can breathe easier. Fluid may also be removed from the abdomen and from the pericardial sac to make the dog more comfortable. The patient should also be hospitalized for stabilization with injectable diuretics and oxygen therapy. Once the dog is stable, oral medications are started. Which medications are chosen depends on the cause of congestive right heart failure. The choices of medications include the following. Furosemide is a diuretic that usually continues indefinitely and may be combined with other diuretics, such as spironolactone to keep the levels of fluid retention low. Dosages are adjusted to the lowest ones that keep the dog out of heart failure. ACE inhibitors, such as enalapril, benazapril, or ramipril, may be used to improve the quality of life of the patient and help reduce fluid retention by the body. Their effects are not immediate, but they exert modest positive effects over weeks and months. Pimibendin is a drug that acts as a vasodilator to relieve the workload of the heart and to increase the force of contractions of the heart. Pimibendin is commonly used with other medications such as diuretics and ACE inhibitors. Digoxin is used in some dogs that have moderate to severe heart failure and very fast heart rates secondary to abnormal rhythms such as atrial fibrillation. Beta blockers such as carvedilol sometimes are added to the treatment protocol to slow the heart rate secondary to atrial fibrillation. Occasionally, other classes of drugs such as calcium channel blockers may be needed to control high heart rates caused by atrial fibrillation. In addition to drug therapy, Dogs with heart failure should not be fed salty foods and low salt diets may be used to limit salt intake. Although strenuous exercise should be avoided, mild exercise may be done based on the guidelines from a veterinary cardiologist. If heartworm disease is present, a treatment protocol can be established once the patient is stable. Intense monitoring is often needed during hospitalization. Follow-up visits are usually scheduled within 5 to 14 days after discharge. Recheck visits may include radiographs, blood work, and electrocardiogram. The interval between visits and further testing depends on the underlying disease and how the patient responds to medications. Periodic monitoring is needed for the life of the dog. Most dogs with right-sided congestive heart failure have an average lifespan of 6 to 12 months, however survival time is independent of the underlying cause of this heart condition. 
For more information about right-sided congestive heart failure in dogs, please contact Dr. James Hornbuckle and his staff at Golden Isles Animal Hospital. They are located at 1965 Glen Avenue, Suite 200, in the city of Brunswick, Georgia. The hospital's phone number is 912-267-6002.